Massachusetts, Governor Hayade plans to establish two operational bases in Cross River State. President Buhari approves establishment of Agricultural Equipment and Machinery Development Institute in Calabar. Plus, Central Bank of Nigeria organizes spur to stabilize a nation's economy and rise of Nigerians. This and more in just a moment. It's a good evening to you, and it's nice to have you on NTA News at 7. I am Paul Abel. Now the news in details. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the request of Cross River State Government to host the establishment of South South Zone Agricultural Equipment and Machinery Development Institute in the state. Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Professor Muhammad Aruna, reviewed this during a visit to the state governor. Correspondent reports. According to the Naseni CEO, the choice of Cross River State follows a rigorous evaluation process of states in South South as well as the achievements of the state governor. The major focus of the institute is to embark on science research to ensure food security and sufficiency in Nigeria, while the host governor expressed excitement that the major will relieve the country from over-dependence on foreign technology. And this Agricultural Equipment and Machinery Development Institute has a mandate to do research, development, produce prototypes, establish pilot plant to demonstrate viability and sustainability, and then any product that is invented and its uh, commerciality is proven is sedated to private sector for mass production. As far as a nation depends on another for agricultural equipment, for armament, for ammunition, for food, for drugs, you are a slavish nation. <laughs> so I, I really want to thank President Muhammad Buhari for finding me a trustworthy to bring such a life-changing institute, which means on a short term, medium term, and long term, all tractors, tractorization, mechanization, and the agricultural industrial revolution that we seek that can really, really shift us to a developed nation. It means it's going to start from cross the Six of the institutes are to be established, one in each geopolitical zone of Nigeria. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. Similarly, the Nigerian Navy is to establish one naval station at Day Spring Island and an outpost at Ikan, all in Bakasi local government area of Cross River State. The Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Zubeiru Gambu, said this during a visit to the Governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayale, in Calabar. Correspondent once again reports. Cross River State has a long coastline with an international maritime border. The visit of the Chief of the Naval Staff is to intimate the Governor of ongoing collaborations to secure its waterways, comb the creeks to ensure a prosperous agenda for the people. It is expedient that speedily we establish um, this location so that uh, we improve uh, the security uh, architecture of the state and of course um, to secure our maritime uh, borders uh, with the Republic of, uh, of Cameroon. With the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement that has been reached, it means the whole Gulf of Guinea and the entire West Africa and indeed Africa is open to maritime trade with Nigeria. So Crossover State is going into Crossover Shipping Line, just like we started the, uh, the Crossover Airline. We can't afford this international trade without a safe passage between us and within the Gulf of Guinea. With a high level of piracy, seriously, we ask that we also need another strong station around the city where the Bakasi Deep Sea Port Project will start this dry season. We will need a strong naval presence. We will need a, a naval patrol across the entire length and breadth of our maritime domain.
The governor signed some documents for the Navy to enhance the administration and sustain cordial relations with its host communities. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. Good governance has been stressed as the only way to overcome the challenges of weak economy and insecurity, insecurity which undermine development in most African countries. This is part of the submissions of political experts at the Seminar on Governance, Security and Sustainable Development in Africa at the National Institute for Security Studies in Abuja. They held that agitations by citizens on regional divides can be addressed through good governance and called on inclusive equity and fairness as well as transparency and accountability. The seminar is being chaired by General Martin Luther Agwe, the former Chief of Army Staff. The federal government is committing over $11 billion for the commencement of works on the Lagos Calabar Coastal Standard Gauge Rail. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, told the press after the Federal Executive Council meeting that this is due to its importance to the nation's coastal economy. State Out correspondent Didi Onipade's report will be brought to you in a subsequent bulletin. To foster financial inclusion and rejig the economy, the Central Bank of Nigeria has rolled out 37 intervention schemes to mitigate the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on businesses and the health sector. Acting Director of Corporate Communications Department, Mr. Usita Umwano Subi disclosed this during the 2021 Central Bank of Nigeria Fair held in Calabar. Justina Etum reports. The core mandate of the Central Bank of Nigeria is to maintain price and ensure economic stability in the nation. To strengthen this role, the Apex Bank in this fay tagged promoting financial stability and economic development is sensitizing stakeholders on policies and initiatives of the CBN aimed at impacting the lives of Nigerians positively. Acting Director, Corporate Communication Department, Mr. Osita Nwanisobi, reiterates CBN's commitment to operate people-oriented policies. We also want to use the opportunity to build confidence in our financial system. We are still in there, the coronavirus experience. We realized that the global economy was shut down and families, businesses were affected. And so the first thing that the CBN did was to roll out some interventions to help people. With the commencement of the events, branch controller Central Bank of Nigeria, Calabab, mounts the podium and highlights the essence of the fair. The question to be asking without answers. This is the time to have answers from the Consumer Protection Department. We have a right as consumer. We're going to learn. And you ask questions and I'm understanding. Stakeholders were also exposed to their rights to information and confidentiality and different services offered by financial institutions. One of the things that you do that you are exposing yourself to fraud. You need to be careful with your your card, your PIN, your password, all those kind of things. People will call you and say they are from Central Bank. We want to update your account. Give us your details. It is a lie. The Cross River State Government lauds the initiative. There's so much that CBN has packaged, and I want to beg us cross river areas to key into all the Central Bank program. It is expected that stakeholders will take advantage of the schemes to better their lives. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Don't forget that you're still watching NTA News, reaching you from our studios here in Calabar. You can equally watch this news on online on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash NTA Calabar. We have more stories for you at the other side of the break. Please stay with us. As news breaks from the north, south, east, and west of Nigeria, we bring it to you.
news from the length and breadth of prosperous states is sent to you via this channel. With movers and shakers in various spheres of influence talking to us, we cover niche and showcase our experience in broadcasting. Because it's NTA Calabar before others. You can't get this anywhere else. It's only here on NTA Calabar News, showing at this time, 3 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and 7 p.m. every day. NTA Calabar News. Our experience counts. It's good to have you back on the news. In case you're just joining us, you're still watching NTA News. We're showing you from our studios in Calabar. Federal government efforts to properly rehabilitate of victims of trafficking through NAPTI has received a boost in our quiet home state as the International Organization for Migration handed over fully equipped and refurbished shelter to the regional command of NAPTI. Emedion Umo reports. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, basically rescue, rehabilitate, and reunite victims of trafficking with their families in addition to its core mandate. But the rehabilitation role cannot be effective without conducive shelter, and this is where the gesture of International Organization for Migration becomes important. This two-story building with three-bedroom flats each refurbished by International Organization for Migration, has accommodated about 700 victims of human trafficking from 2015 to date. We train them as well as empower them at the end of their stay here. Those of them who want to go back to school will uh, ensure that they go back to school. Those of, those of them who want to learn uh, a kind of trade will ensure that uh, we give them that training as well. There have been uh, our major stakeholders in the fight against human trafficking. The item being received today will be utilized for the benefit of the victims. For the International Organization for Migration, victims of trafficking deserve adequate care and conducive environment, having found themselves in the situation due to no fault of theirs. Within a shelter facility like this, that they can be able to get the counseling, they can be able to get the rehabilitation support that they need, um, to enable them to contribute back to their communities. Relief materials were also part of the items donated to the victims. In Uyo, Emidion Omo, NTA News. The Nigerian Police Force and Nigerian Bar Association have resolved to advance the cause of criminal justice in the country. This was when the leadership of the NBA visited the first headquarters in Abuja. In a statement, the IGP pledged to work in synergy with the NBA in a joint committee soon to be established aimed at harmonizing functions and developing new frameworks for promoting due process and the rule of law in resolving unnecessary disputes between police officers and defense attorneys and promoting respect for the rights and privileges of the citizens during criminal investigations. President of the NBA, Dayo Akwata, applauded the force for reforms initiated towards promoting the rights and privileges of the citizens and further advocated for enhanced collaboration between them as cardinal players within the Nigerian criminal justice system and the force. And now to party matters, a meeting of the People's Democratic Party, Board of Trustees and the National Working Committee as held in Abuja towards resolving the recent internal crisis rocking the party. Timothy Yusuf reports that the meeting held at the National Secretariat of the party in Abuja. The resignation of seven elected members of the National Executive Committee, citing lack of inclusion by the Prince, which is a led National Working Committee, is a major agenda of the meeting. The chairman of the PDP Board of Trustees, Senator Wali Jibril and National Chairman of the Party, Prince Uche Sakandus, appealed for calm while the areas of dispute are being resolved. And now to COVID-19 matters from Niger State. We hear that the Niger State government says it may be under moral obligation to reinstate COVID-19 safety protocols and sensitize the general public to get vaccinated against the dreaded disease. The state chief executive says 
the action plan became imperative following the reported cases of 18 prospective core members who tested positive to COVID-19 after a routine test conducted on arrival at the NYSA orientation camp Paiku in Paiku local government area of Niger State. Usina Musa reports. 19 safety protocols intended to be reinforced by the state government include compulsory wearing of face masks and washing of hands before admittance into any public institution in the state. The reintroduction of the COVID-19 protocols became necessary to stem the upsurge in the number of cases of the acute respiratory disease across the state. It has come to our notice that the compass that have been posted to United States after the Minister of Health had conducted the routine test that is usually administered on them. About 18 of them were confirmed to be COVID positive. And as a result, we agreed that the state government is going to resuscitate all our COVID protocols. Nobody should have access to all government buildings without a face mask. Commissioner for Information and Strategies, Mohamed Sani Idris, however, described as false speculations making rounds on the outbreak of cholera in the state, assuring that the state is on red alert in case of any eventuality. The commissioner says the state executive council meeting was suspended in honor of the late elder statesman, Senator Nuhu Aliu, who has contributed to socio-economic development of the state during his active days. Emena Hussain Musa, NT News. And now on the situation of COVID-19 around the country, 747 new cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in Nigeria by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, which shows that Lagos has the highest number of 488 cases, followed by Ibom State with 121 cases. Oyo takes the next position with 29 cases, Rivers 25, Ogun 15, and FCT Abuja 13. Others are Kaduna 13, Kwara 11, Ekiti, and Oshun have 10 cases each, Edu 6, Abia 3, Anambra 2, and Plateau 1. Till date, 176,011 cases of the disease have been confirmed in the country, with 165,208 persons discharged, while 2,167 persons have died so far of the pandemic. Before we go, a quick look at some of the stories that made headlines. The Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Zubeiru Gambo, has visited the Governor of Cross River State and informed him of the Nigerian Navy operational activities as well as plans to establish two operational bases in the state. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the establishment of South South Zone Agricultural Equipment and Machinery Development Institute in Calabar. We also heard in the news that the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN has rolled out 37 intervention schemes to mitigate the adverse effects of COVID 19 pandemic on businesses and the health sector at a fair in Calabar. That is it for the news tonight. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Paul Abel. Have a wonderful night rest.